We're in a Mission Connection, and you're in a workshop called Developing uh, Personal Prayer Teams. And uh, I'm really, really excited that you're here. I'm just excited to serve with the body of Christ in prayer and to mobilize prayer, encourage prayer, uh, build prayer, help sustain prayer. And uh, how many realize that? Prayer is probably the most resisted activity on the planet. How many, how many have felt like at times you're just, uh, well, I'm a dentist, so I could say like you're pulling teeth. How many uh, can just, you know, I'm a retired dentist and uh, I, I'm so glad to be retired to be uh, rehired by the Lord. No, it's been a long journey, but I'm so glad not to have to carry the weight of a practice and the, and the running of a business. So my wife and I can now give ourselves just to the church and to prayer and to just developing and working with prayer. And, and so we, we go to Manor House, which is uh, formerly City Bible Church in Portland, Oregon. And we've been there for a long time, like I said, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been uh, the prayer pastors for 20 of that is about half the time. Um, which has been an amazing journey. Uh, I didn't know a lot about prayer when I was given this assignment, but I was excited to go on the journey and see what, what God had. And one of the very, very, very first assignments was to develop personal prayer teams for every leader. That was the, <laughs> now, now, we just, there was never a formal position of prayer pastor in the church. So we were a, the first official designated prayer pastors, actually with that title. So uh, not that titles matter, but uh, leadership does matter and authority makes a difference. And so we were given that assignment to be the prayer pastors not really knowing exactly what that would look like and what direction we would go. But I remember the very, the very first words the Lord gave us that launched us into it that everyone says now. I was just speaking in a, uh, uh, a meeting and I said, more prayer is better than less prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. People like went, what did he just say? Like, and I, and I don't even know what I said. So I had to ask him, what did I say that you said more prayer is better than less prayer. I can't believe how that made me feel. I actually thought I could maybe do that. And we realized at that time that people were under an unusual amount of guilt in the area of prayer, that they weren't praying enough. Were they doing enough? And it seemed like every time you had to get something going like that, you had to put a lot of pressure on people to try to get them to do something. They weren't even sure they knew how to, or how to do it well. And uh, they were always comparing themselves to others. And so I have to tell you that more prayer is better than less prayer was something that just began to free people up. Like, I think I could do that. Like, what would that look like? It actually created intrigue instead of a repulsion or a distancing or a, or a, and so we just kept saying more prayer is better than less prayer in the church. Everybody started saying every meeting, more prayer is better than less prayer. If I told you the more prayer <laughs> that is happening in our church now, I can honestly go back to that one statement that began to unlock the potential that was all locked up in this one idea of prayer. That we know, that we know the Lord said, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. That prayer represents relationship with God, intimacy. It represents closeness. It represents all these dynamics. And so we started to say prayer isn't something we do, it's somebody we're with. Mm -hmm. And we began to say things like prayer isn't an, activ isn't an activity, it's an act of intimacy. It's about the relationship with God. It's about the conversation. It's about 
the dynamic of intimacy. It's this whole dimension of gnosko where Paul said, you know, he wanted to know Christ, this whole idea of a relationship. So he began to change the whole way, the culture of, of, of how we viewed prayer, how prayer looked, what was prayer. And it, it began to create this excitement, began to create this, this movement, this, this thought towards more prayer, prayer's a relationship. God waits up all night for us to get up. Things that changed the way people looked at prayer, looked at devotions, looked at all the ways that, that, that prayer was pressuring them at one moment, and suddenly it's inviting them in the next moment. And this, this whole thing has really moved the dial and, and began to breed into the people a real excitement about prayer, a real thought. Now, remember, that's 20 years ago. That's, that's back when, <laughs> that's back when, when, when we didn't have that prayer was the most resisted activity at the planet. We found that out when we went to try to, to implement uh, the very first thing the Lord said, and that's a little backdrop <laughs> to what I want to talk about, which is developing a personal prayer team, which is no small matter. And I always tell people, all leaders, if you don't put it at, on the top of your to-do list, like number one, and you're going to do it tomorrow, you will never get it done. And, and I'll give you reasons why that won't ever happen. So we, and, 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 it, and it always bears itself out that this one thing is so resisted because it obviously it's so powerful because mm -hmm. prayer unlocks the, the everything in the kingdom, releases the power of God, the dynamic of God. Boy, if there's one thing that the enemy doesn't want released, it's prayer. And he doesn't want more prayer released <laughs> because prayer is releasing the hand of God to move on behalf of our lives. It's to move on behalf of our families. And we know there's two dynamics to prayer. There's communion prayer and there's warfare prayer. And you can then you can categorize all prayer into those two dimensions. So if you're, if, if you're trying to hang prayer somewhere, you can hang it all in devotional or communion or intimacy prayer or whatever word you want to use. You can, you can line everything refreshing, restoring, renewing, or you can go over here and line it up with enforcement, warfare, uh, 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 just all the ideas of, 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 of thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But the first scripture, of course, is, is our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So just in the first two verses of the Lord's Prayer, you get intimacy and you get warfare, bringing forth God's kingdom on the earth. And this is so powerful because if you have these simple places to hang prayer, it doesn't become a, like a prayer meeting. Like, what are you doing for prayer? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm exciting people with more prayer is better than less prayer instead of, well, we do these two meetings. If we define them as meetings, we get, we context it too small. If we define it as an opportunity, it becomes something that people want to get involved in and want to discover this dimension. And I really am excited about this, just sharing with you as prayer leaders mm -hmm. and those that are interested in prayer want to find out about a personal prayer team. I'm so excited about this. So that's kind of a little bit of a backdrop. First assignment is develop, the Lord says in my heart, puts in there, develop personal prayer teams for all the leaders. Not anyone had one. So it wasn't a, and, and the Lord, I said, I don't think they want those. I don't know if they want those. I don't even know. <laughs> sure enough, they didn't. And, and so, so yeah, but they, after they had a heart attack and after they had some other things, 
you know, then they they were more interested. And as other people, one guy was so resistant. I wouldn't do a personal prayer team. I wouldn't tell my story to anybody. I don't want anyone to know. Had a heart attack. He came by and said, hey, by the way, could you help me with that personal prayer team? Uh, because we were in this battle. We got to look at what we're doing that's inside something. We're, we're building a prayer team. But in the, the dynamic of life, we're in this cosmic conflict. We're in this supernatural warfare. And we want people protected. We want people kept safe. We want people to make it to the end of their destiny. We want people to win. We want, my, my whole passion is that every leader makes it to the finish line like the Apostle Paul, and we'll use his, his life as an example. We want, Paul knew he had to get all the way to Rome, and then he would complete his assignment, but he had three missionary trips before that. And so, and then before that, he had those years of training. Paul had to make it to the finish line. And I want to, I want to talk about that before I talk about the practical. So, one of, the, one of the things I just said is people might not want a personal prayer team. And we're going to talk about that. So you have to remember, if you're building one for yourself, there's resistance inside of each of us. And if you're building one for someone else, there's resistance in them. But we can overcome those. God can help us. But I wanted to share about your life personally. And I wanted to say something. I just wanted to say God has given you visions and dreams that he wants you to fulfill. And I sincerely believe that what he's put in you to do, a personal prayer team will help you do it. And that's, that's, the, that's the partnership. That's the excitement is that God's put inside of you a dream. The Bible says, delight thyself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. I want you to think about in your own heart and write those things down maybe even today. What has God put in me to do? What is the vision? What are the dreams? God is, wants me. Some in this room are young. Some are older. And, and yet, no matter what our age, we're in common. Each of us have a dream have a vision. If you're supporting someone else with a personal prayer team, they have a dream and they have a vision. And we want to see these dreams and these visions that God implants in our heart be fulfilled. Be, we don't want destinies to be cut short. We don't want lives to run amok. We don't want, we want people and I want you to fulfill the destiny that's on your life to contribute that part, that piece, that dynamic that God has for you. And, and personal prayer teams play into this. The Apostle Paul, I go to the story with King Agrippa and, and he's in Caesarea and, 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 and this whole thing is breaking out to where Paul is going to end up going to Rome. And, and yet he's in this moment where he gets an audience with King Agrippa. And he shares his story before he came to Christ. And he shares his story coming to Christ. And then he shares his story, what he's going to do for Christ. And he says this, and he says and he said this in, in, in Acts 26, 19. And he says, and so, after he's told this to the king, and the king's listening, the king is very in, in, interested in the whole Jewish culture. He's so interested. And, he, and Paul knows that he knows a lot about the culture right there. And he says to him, and so King Agrippa, I obeyed that vision from heaven. And, and then it says in, in the King James, it says it this way. King Agrippa, uh, and then he says in the King James, and it says, whereupon, O King Agrippa, 
I did not disobey unto the heavenly vision. And I believe everyone that comes to know Christ has a heavenly vision. But let's pull back to the backdrop of this. Now, it's very inter interesting that Paul in Ephesians 6, 18 to 20, where he's speaking about prayer and he's talking about prayer, says, I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador, verse 20, Ephesians 6, 20. But here it is, and I find this so fascinating about the Apostle Paul, because he not only said throughout the epistles that he was praying for people, but you notice that he asked for prayer. Mm -hmm. And this is so significant, and I want to call it the big ask. It's the big ask. It's, it's I need your prayers. Mm -hmm. I need your prayers. This is what he said. So pray. And this is what he's doing. He's calling prayer into himself. He's calling prayer on behalf of him. He's calling prayer for him. If every one of us asked for more prayer, I mean, every believer, it would unlock prayer mm -hmm. because then there would not only be a, 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 an ask, there would be a do, and then there would be a connection between the two, and it would so detonate the power of God in agreement to bring forth. And so Paul says, so pray. He's asking for prayer. And that was what people, when I said, I don't think the leaders want it, they weren't asking. And so when you went to him to say, hey, can we build a prayer? I don't think so. And so I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. But Paul says, so pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Now I'm thinking about Paul speaking boldly before King Agrippa. And over the course of his life, building an arsenal of prayer behind him, knowing that it was prayer. He had, Paul had to know with the revelation and wisdom that he was given, that it was prayer on his behalf that was going to propel the power of God through him to accomplish God's perfect will. So Paul's demonstrating humility here. Paul knew that he needed the prayers. Now you can quickly go back to uh, Acts uh, 12, Acts chapter 12 and see Peter in prison. And it says the church was praying. And of course, we know an angel was sent to Peter, delivered him out of prison and right to the prayer meeting. They didn't even believe, I, I mean, their faith was probably such that they're just hoping at some point he got out. He was out and he was at the prayer meeting. So I think it's interesting how the Lord has caused this prayer dynamic to be knit together, how we're so dependent on each other. And this is what's so dynamic. And I want to talk to you about building a personal prayer team. Let's just, let's just talk about that. Let's, let's talk about the practicals because it's so amazing what God wants to do through prayer. We all know that. Your prayer people in this room, your mission, some are missionaries, some are serving on the mission field. Now, this is the one thing, building a personal prayer team, that, that we found missionaries went out on their mission, and I would talk to them as the prayer pastor, because I don't want to see anyone not fulfill their mission. Under pressure, uh, stressed out, full of angst, you know, just battling out there on on the, on the front lines. I've been to Indonesia, some other countries. You know that when you're in other places, there's other levels of warfare. Do you have a personal prayer team? No. <laughs> I'd say, uh, we've got to check that box. That should have been in the pre-missionary pre training manual. That, that should have been way before you got out there on the field. 
Ask pastors. Do you have a personal prayer team? No. Are you under pressure? Yes. Oh, we should have had this. This should have been in the pre, pre, pre training. This should have been done when you were not even thinking about pastoring a church. And, and, or, you know, so to me, because what happens is everyone who gets a personal prayer team sees the difference immediately. Why do they see the difference? Because they didn't have one before. <laughs> And they realized they were slogging through, pressing through. They say, in, they say in the military, if you get down to using your pistol, the mission's gone awry. You, it's not a good situation when you have to shoot your gun yourself. Meaning that we want to get people into the, to the place where they're covering missionaries. I had a missionary once uh, in my dental practice, and he was, frankly, he was a large, tall fella from... I think the Ukraine or somewhere there. And he was looking down at me and I knew he was a missionary. So I asked him, uh, do you, and I'm, I'm in my journey as the prayer pastor, trying to honestly become fully immersed in, in that nothing happens except by prayer. I mean, I had to put myself in an immersion to realize that God works through prayer not just through ingenuity, not just through talents, not just through gifting, but he works through prayer. And so I asked the missionary, do you believe in prayer? And he goes, and he, he kind of scowled at me and he looked at me firmly and he said, we live by prayer. And I realized at that moment, I'm not there. I, I, that I, I, I just got a full on education. He said to me, and one moment, he said, our church stopped the prayer meetings and stopped prayer for whatever reason. I'll have no idea why they did it. I know why they did it because it's the most resisted activity on the planet. And they probably just didn't sustain the mission's prayer meeting. At that moment, he said, when they stopped that prayer meeting at our local church, it was like a force field went down in front of us and we almost died. And I just, I just had to take that as a reality that, that this is life and death. This is about a warfare. This is about advancing the kingdom. This is about what Jesus was born into. This is about what the apostle Paul was born into. Paul, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. I, I think it's recorded in scripture uh, several times, but I don't think it's just several times he asked. I think the apostle Paul knew so well that his ministry success was based on those praying for him, that he was soliciting, calling prayer into his life everywhere he went. Now, I can't say that for certain. I'm only saying that subjectively based upon this, this data that I've given you from scriptures. But if you look at the success of Paul, you've got to realize there had to be a prayer engine behind him. And so that's what I just so passionate about, is that this prayer engine gets built behind people, around people. And, and believe me, it's resisted. I just said three reasons that we might not build the personal prayer team. I remember I was at a pastor's gathering, asked him, I was just a small group. It was an intimate group, just four or five of us. They asked me to come and talk on personal prayer teams. And, and I don't think at that time, I can't say that, document that, but I don't think one pastor had a personal prayer team. And I just said this at, in, in passing, but I've written it in my notes here. I said, why? I said, there's three reasons why you probably won't do what I'm going to ask you to do. One is pride. And two is you're too busy. And three is you're embarrassed to tell anybody what you really need prayer for. And they go, bingo, that's it. <laughs> that's why we won't ask for prayer. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that was pretty humbling just to, for them just to say that. And I said, but let me, let me tell you that, that it is the most resisted. And once you get one, you can't live without one. Once you have one, you won't know what to, you can't live without it. Because, 
because it's God using their prayers on your behalf to win the battle for you, to go ahead of you, to get God's hand out in front of you, to be sweeping out the enemies. I don't, I haven't been behind the curtain. I don't see, I don't know exactly all that happens. I just know it happens. I know that there's greater success with those in our ministry that have prayer teams and those that don't. They just get clouded, clouded, cluttered, cluttered, confused, and critical, and the pressure gets so great. Those with the team stay clear, concise, comfortable, competent, courageous, and they just seem to be moving. They, 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 we work in tandem with these prayer teams, and, and it's amazing. I, wanted to, I want us to overcome that. If you're going to build one, you must overcome that resistance, that resistance to resist the personal prayer team. You've got to get to the spot where you want a personal prayer team, where you want to invite prayer into your life. That's going to mean that you have to be a little bit transparent, but I'll, I'll share about that in a minute. Uh, we, I want to say this. We need to get comfortable asking for prayer. That it, it, it pride short circuits that. And I think that we see it as a weakness to ask for prayer. And the Apostle Paul saw it as strength. In fact, he saw weakness as strength. He saw a thorn in the flesh as strength, humbling him. We can't do this on our own. We need each other. And the moment that we pull prayer into our life, we're going to sense a difference. And there's so many areas. Okay, let's, let's go on. Talk about off-site prayer and on-site prayer. Let's get to the practicals, okay? Let's make this really, 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 really simple. And because I want every single one of you to build a personal prayer team. If you don't have a personal prayer team, tomorrow, today, put that number one on your to-do list and don't do anything else until you get this done. <laughs> because if you don't, I've watched pastors, I'll talk to them, yeah, I'm gonna build that. Number three on the to-do list, a year later, hey, did you get your team together? Uh, oh, you know, I really need to do that. And I don't want you to be that a year later. I want you to be with the prayer team by the end of next week, functioning, fully functioning, off the rails. You giving them prayer requests, we're going to nail this thing. I'm telling you, if you're in here and you don't have one, you need one. Get one. <laughs> the Apostle Paul needed one. Hey, even Jesus needed one. He went when he went to the garden. He took three. I'm telling you, it, we're we're we need one. So so now we have to move. We need one. To I want one, and I'm going to build. One. Okay, let's talk about offsite prayer first. Offsite, offsite prayer. Now, remember we've journeyed through uh, technology. I'm just gonna. This is going to be so simple. You're going to think, did we have to? Have, I mean, did we need a whole seminar? <laughs> do we need a whole workshop for this? It's going to be so simple. We journeyed through. We had on-site prayer, and we used to. And I'm going to differentiate between off-site and on-site. Okay, we used to promote on-site first, off-site second. COVID hit, and we are so glad we understood off-site because there was no more on-site. <laughs> and so th this is, this is, this is on off-site prayer. And I wanna talk about it. And it's gonna be a text group, texting group, just as simple as that. We have come through emails. We've come through news newsletters. The, the prayer they needed was already gone before they got the newsletter. Emails, people don't read that much anymore phones phones their their head is embedded there's a little nose print right there and you want your prayer request to be right where their nose is because their eyes are right above that and so this is really simple and i'm going to give you five simple steps to developing a personal prayer team you can do this with anybody anywhere for who was the one that was trying to get prayer teams for them for their other leaders? Uh, was it Cindy doing that or Judy doing that? Somebody was doing that. Um, uh, or yeah, I think Judy, did you recognize? Yeah, this is so simple. First thing, number one, 
identify the group people. Now, this is important that you have the right people. They don't have to be quote intercessors. They can be your friends, your family. I recommend a text group of about 10 people. That's a beautiful size. Singles, married, those of character and those that love you. That's it. Uh, it, it again, we're dispelling the idea that there's select people who pray, right? Isn't everyone an intercessor? <laughs> everyone needs to know how to pray. And so we, and if you're married, get together with your spouse, talk over those people, agree on those 10. That's important that you have the right people. Agree on those 10, eight, six, doesn't matter. More than four probably, but not more than 12. Somewhere in that sweet spot. And then this is the next thing. This is number two. Ask them. Just suffer the rejection if you have to. If you don't like rejection, <laughs> this might not be comfortable. There's two reasons asking them are not going to be comfortable for leaders. One is that one, well, the, really the primary reason is most leaders like to be empowering people and helping people and encouraging people and building people up. Leaders aren't necessarily comfortable with asking people to help them. That's what the big ask is. And that's why it gets tripped up for leaders because they're actually calling these people not to put them into a ministry, not to empower them. <laughs> no, they're calling them to ask them for help. Can you help me? Help you what? Fulfill my life's dreams? fulfill my life's mission? Can you come alongside me and stand with me when it really gets difficult and I want to quit? Can you come into my world where I may share some things with you that I can't share with anybody else and that you'll stand with me? That's the big ask. And that's why it just it gets repelled because it's, it takes humility to ask people to pray for you. And the Apostle Paul was given the thorn to stay humble, to be in that state of need for the Lord and for others. And yet he accomplished, think of the, what he accomplished. And think of what God's put in you to accomplish. So you've got the big ask. That's You ask him, and then you set up the text box. If you're me, I might have trouble. I'm so technologically unable to do almost anything, but I'm learning one new thing a day. That's my goal. But you can ask anyone if that, and most everyone could do that. But, but we don't want to make it technically difficult, nor do we want to make the process complicated. How many take an idea, if you're, if you're an idea person, and you make it more complicated than it needs to be? Lift your hand up and bet you. <laughs> no, okay, thank you for, for being honest. No, we don't want this to be complicated. We want this to be implementable, doable, simple, something that everyone can do. Now, once you get the text box set up, you just have to initiate it. Now, I want to talk about two levels of prayer that you're going to use this text box for. It's simple. Proactive prayer. Now, that's the prayer that you initiate that is on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis to give updates. I'm a huge proponent of weekly. Giving people targets. You might have randomly people that pray for you, but if you're not giving them targets, there's nothing for them to hit. And they'll be out of sight, out of mind. They'll become disinterested, not in you, but in praying for you because they won't know. They'll just be, I ask people, do you have people praying? Oh, yeah, we have, I have a whole bunch of people praying for me. When's the last time you gave them a target? Oh, they just pray for me. No, they're probably not praying for you. <laughs> I hate to say, they're, you need to give them targets specific weekly targets. Now, 
I give you five areas that that can include. That can include family, vocation, if you're bivocational, ministry. I mean, bivocational, I mean, you serve in the church and you have a regular job, or you might serve all in the church. And I like to think of ministry, and I don't like to think of it as, quote, ministry. I like to think of it as relationships, as the things you're doing to advance, to disciple, advance the kingdom, build people's life. I think sometimes we get so caught up in, in ministry, it, it, it isn't defined as people. It's defined as some, something we do, something bigger. Got to get it down to people. And that's what ministry is. It's loving people, encouraging people, building people. And then health and finances. And, and so family, vocation, ministry, health, and finances. Pretty much, and you could probably add some more to that. I just use that as a starting point. For people because they go what do i have and pray about i said put a couple things in each one of those well do i have to get real personal no if you if it's brand new don't get super personal in the beginning you have to grow in the relationship with your group and so enjoy the growth of relationship through this idea and this dynamic of them praying for you they're already your friends or you wouldn't have asked them but now they're praying specifically so open up, this is a real important point. Open up to the degree that the trust is growing, okay? So don't, don't make the mistake. And don't make the mistake of, of this group is for them to counsel you or to impart vision to you. They're not there to get, be your counselor and they're not there to impart vision. You're, you know your vision. They're there to pray for you. Pray, 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 pray. People that are counselors, they like to go off into counseling. People that like to help with vision, they like to figure your life out. This isn't that. This is prayer on your behalf. Fifth thing, number five, is reactive requests or prayer. And that is the, the genius in this having phones until there's another technology <laughs> until we progress on to something else is you have the ability with texting to be in real time with people i mean real time meaning i i for this i was nervous to do this i'll be honest i'm nervous to to share in these contexts technology all of it. But my personal prayer team, I can show you, text them. Another personal prayer box, text them. Our personal prayer team for our pastor, we're, we've been in a, we've been, in, we're lifelong friends. We've, seven couples have been the prayer past or the, the personal prayer team for our pastor for 15 years. Now it's been two pastors we've moved through. I text them. Within, within five minutes and sitting here and being nervous, I can, I can enlist probably 30 people right at, within two minutes to be interceding for you and to be interceding for me. <laughs> I think it's genius. And, and I'm, I'm so far from technologically savvy that all I have to do is know how to, I guess, Put a text in a box and push a button. And, and that is the power behind this. Anyone, and you know what? Now, nowadays with Messenger, I don't know about Messenger. Skip that. I don't know anything about that. Text box, that could be anywhere on the field. That goes around the world. That it, we, are, we, are, we are in with personal prayer teams. Now, that's offsite. Simply five things. Utilize it. Build it. Utilize it. I have to remind the pastors, oh, you haven't put a prayer out for a while. Oh, yeah, it's on my to-do list. Yeah, the devil just slipped it right off. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, this prayer pastor is job security. <laughs> I just, I love promoting prayer. I love building prayer. I love stirring prayer. It's so much fun. Uh, Off-site, face-to-face. And I want to uh, put together on-site with like a Zoom meeting because 
nowadays with Zoom, face to face is almost like being there except the laying on of hands. But uh, in with this group, I would encourage uh, post COVID and as we get out of this and all that, that you do have times and you can set those on a, a monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly. And if you're a missionary, you can set it up on Zoom where you actually get face to face. It's so powerful just to get face to face, share your needs, feel the emotion in your face and just stuff, crying, tears, whatever it is. We're emotional people. We care about each other. It's powerful to be connected. And uh, so I recommend in your home or in a, in a representative's home, somebody, uh, that you come and you just strictly put two chairs in the middle of the room. You come together, you tell them family, vocation, ministry, health and finances, this is how we're doing. You close your mouth and you let them go to work. They lay hands on you, pray for you, intercede for you, prophesy over you, bless you, encourage you. I don't, I don't stop them from prophesying. I just stop them from counseling. I, I, not that there's, no one really does that. Everyone's got your best interest at heart. There's a power in laying on of hands. There's a power in human connection. There's a power in agreement. You get this rolling in your life. We have a monthly prayer meeting that's Zoom now, but, but we also have the text box. I remember, uh, well, I could tell story after story. I want to get to the practical stuff, just, just to where we can... I guess we're not going to do probably breakouts, but we're going to, I hope this has stirred up a few questions. If you have questions, please write when I'm, as I'm finishing this up, we would like to maybe uh, have a few questions from you to Michael secure there. Just, just uh, he's co-host and we don't, we cannot go over. So just text him uh, because of the next workshop, text him any questions you have. And I'll finish up while you're while I'm finishing up on site. And then we were going to break out in rooms and pray for each other. But I really feel like right now, uh, God wants to just rota till this end. And I want to pray for you at the end. So Michael, make sure I have enough minutes at the end to pray an impartation for just a I want to pray a blessing on your life, but I want to pray for the grace to build these teams or to go out and help people build these teams. This is so critical right now. If there was ever a time in history where people needed prayer teams, it's now. Well, let me finish up uh, just uh, uh, this whole idea. Building, think about it now. You're building offsite prayer through using your text group and you're giving them targets every week or every other week that are, that are, for, that are proactive for that week or for that couple weeks. And you're also, you have a, a ability to do reactive prayer. And so that's fantastic. So if an emergency comes up, child, whatever, be on your way to anything, you can pull your phone out and get that prayer to them. You've got people praying in real time. And then we've got on-site prayer where you set it up, where people can come to you, lay hands on you, talk, pray, and, and, and really pour into your life. Remember, there's two infilling moments in our life, I believe. There's the, there's the time we meet with the Lord and he pours into us. And there's the time when someone else is pouring into us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so often we're doing so much output, we forget to do the input and we don't have anything to output. And so we've got to, and, and so devotions and personal prayer teams, I don't have time to, merge those together but suffice it to say those are moments of input now um uh, we said it's not counseling it's not a time of vision casting it's a time of praying and it can be done on zoom skype or any of those modes and uh i just really believe that this is a key to your life and i just want to encourage you be an encouragement to build a personal prayer team if you don't have one, and then to help others build. You don't have to be a prayer pastor to help others build personal prayer teams. Be that and help them. If you are a prayer pastor, I hope these tools have helped. Michael, do we have any questions that have come in? We do. To um, us? Tony is asking if you could repeat the five uh, prayer points. 
the five family vocation. Huh? Family vocation. Oh, yes. Uh, the five areas are family, vocation, which is your job, so employment, ministry, health, and finances. And I separate um, uh, vocation, obviously that's the means to make a living from finances. That's a whole other world, is the management of finances, how are finances going? And, there, and, and there's areas also, and you can rototill those in like purity, all those, but those, some of the more personal areas take much more trust to build in. There's, there's a lot to unpack in this, but those are the five main ones. Yeah. Trudy wanted to know if um, you would ask the pastor it, who he would want on the team and then approach them directly rather than, I think in my mind, rather than going and asking them first. Yes. To if you're the building first. a first, yeah. If you're building a personal prayer team for the pastor, it's a little different if it's an only an on-site team. I do, we do off, we do, um, excuse me, I do off-site for our pastor, meaning he's not there physically to pray for him, but the seven couples are always there. But before we launch anything, it, it, he's the one who identifies the people or you identify them if you're the captain of the team together. So yes, or whatever the answer is, you wouldn't do anything without that pastor knowing because he's got to have the trust because if he happens to be at an on-site meeting where he comes into it, he can't be staring at someone that he doesn't really feel comfortable with. That isn't gonna be a real way to open up. So he trusts these seven couples we have to the, with his life. And, and but yet we've been together for 15 years and we're lifelong friends. But that's another story of, of the, the longevity of this. So yes. And now, and, and honestly, too, you might have one pastor. We've already been through where we're the prayer pastors. I mean, we're the personal prayer team for the pr pastor. We've already been from one pastor to another. And then we had go through the process where our, it, you, you like, our, it, does this work with all these people? If we get a thumbs up, then we just keep going. But I just don't think there would ever be a change. But anyway, yes, involve the pastor. And um, Jeff asked, would personal prayer teams be good for everyone involved in church prayer ministry? Well, that, yes. I'm just going to say yes with a big exclamation mark. Um, it's so funny when, I'll just share commentary on that for a bit. People feel like, that's only for pre, uh, leaders in the church, or that's only for certain, you have to get to a certain level before you, before you deserve people praying for you. And, and I wanted to, I tell him, I debunked that as quick as I can. I said, do you have anything in your heart you want to accomplish? And they go, oh yeah, I do. I said, then you need a personal prayer team. I can help you do it. We can do this in 10 minutes and we can, we can get this going. Everybody needs a personal prayer team think if everyone in the church had a personal prayer team if that was the only activity we did that would unlock intercession to a degree because i always say this to everyone intercession is the highest form of love when you step into somebody else's battle with them you are linked there is nothing that can say it's like I always wondered why the men that go to war are still having their, their reunions and they're talking about that. It's because they went to battle together. When you go to battle with somebody and you will, you're just joined. You just are. Okay. Sorry, Michael. Go. Um, Tony asked, can you uh, list the five steps to developing a prayer team? Identify yes. the people. Okay. Number one, identify the people. And if you have a spouse, work together. Don't get the wrong people on the team, <laughs> okay? Ask the person. That's the next big thing right off the list. Once you've determined the list, 
you go to and ask, would you like to be on my personal prayer team? This is how we're setting it up. Are you good? Would you like to do it? Yes or no? <laughs> Just sit there and take it. I have it with people. They see it as a privilege. That's number two. That's a whole nother story. Set up a texting group in your phone. Set up the texting group right away. Soon as you get the people identified, set the group up and send out your first proactive prayer. So you set up and then you send out your, you determine on Monday, Monday, every day, every other, every other Monday, first proactive prayer list, and then be ready to use your prayer team as needed for reactive prayer. And, uh, and so it works beautifully. It's so simple. And then it's, it's launched and it doesn't change. <laughs> That's what, what it was when you set it up and the first month, it's what it is 10 months from now, two years from now, three years from now. Now, there may be a little bit of attrition and there may be a little bit of need for addition. Then you just simply ask another person I'd like you to do this. We have a text box going. I'd like to add you. Great. Thumbs up. And so-and-so may say, hey, you know, I've been on this. Uh, you know, I, I just don't feel I could do this anymore. And you just drop them off. Just, just, but don't ever let it drop off. Just let them release and bring new people in. So, Michael. Um, I don't have any more questions. Uh, unless any, have any more People questions. can unmute themselves. Yeah, you can all unmute if you have a question or if you have a question, unmute. And yeah, why don't we stay muted? If you have a question, unmute and we'll see who, uh, Cindy. Um, I wonder, is it a big problem? I know this is kind of a different question, but um, if I were to ask certain people on my prayer team, it seems like, you know, our prayer ministry team prays for each other, but not quite as specific in this we do text each other and bring up personal things and you know these issues but um would is it gonna be like if everybody one was asking for people to be on their prayer team what if you get like 10 requests or you know people are asking the same people or how i mean i don't know i guess i we need to depend on the holy spirit how to direct us in asking who to be on the team, but I see like a lot of the, you know, key leaders have different key people in their life, but they're also in other areas. So I don't know how, does it get complicated or is it just, this is my thinking kind of I, spiraling. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good forward thinking. I think that, I think uh, again, we're, we're crouching this under more prayer is better than less prayer. And that we that the ask is a privilege to pray for people. They love to be on the inside of people's hearts and lives. Um, and I just personally, we are in a big church, a lot of people asking a lot of people to pray for them. Um, I just never seen it as a problem. Uh, and you know what? In the big ask, someone has me to say, no, I'm on three teams already. I can't do any more. My phone blows up all day long. I'm <laughs> right. You know, we just have to trust people. If, if it's getting too much that they have the right to say no. And, and you can ask them that. Are you on other people's teams? Is this too much? And, oh no, I, right. I'll be on your team. Then thank you. Get them on there. But you, you can just, you know, just a little bit of courtesy and a little bit of care and a little bit of sensitivity. I don't, I, I think the, the soil is, is rich and there's not many people planting in it right yet. So until it just becomes a problem, when it becomes a problem, then we've got a good problem. That would be a great problem. Anyone else have a question that, and then I'll pray for you. One more question. Yeah, uh, Jeff. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about confidentiality. Um, yep. I, I've been to some churches, they never talk about that. The church I'm going to now, before I could go on their uh, prayer chain, um, they had me read and sign a confidentiality thing, which I think was fantastic, but I'd never been in a church that had done that, although I'd been in churches that had, had a lot of gossip about prayer. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, 
Michael, if you want to go ahead and put my wife's email address in the chat, it's Mark, M-A-R-K-A-N-D-S-U-S-A-N-J at gmail.com. Com. That's Mark, M-A-R-K, and A-N-D, Susan, S-U-S-A-N, J for Jones, just J at gmail.com. I can send you, Susan can send you, yes, confidentiality is, I should have said that. Thank you, Jeff, that, thank you for even, that, that should have put the big C right at the very top. It's in everything that we do, everything we say, nothing gets outside the room. That will destroy this faster than anything. It is top. That, we should end on that, and I'll pray for you because they're going to cut us off right at 11.10, and I see it's 11.06. Right in all of your, all of your writings on this, write confidentiality, confidential. If you feel you need to have people sign stuff, again, gossip is a destroyer, and this, your team will get so tight, so much will be divulged. Things have been shared with me from one leader, this lead. I have to, you have to walk in such integrity as an intercessor. Even this will clean the church up. It should, unless it destroy. I mean, otherwise, no one's going to say anything. And we're going to live these tight lives, and no one's going to be able to help anybody because, oh, and I have two books. I have a devotional book that can be plugged in there. I have a devotional book called Unscripted. It, it also, I'm not peddling anything. Just it's unscripted. It can be dropped in there. And but one that you might want to get if you're if you're a prayer pastor is cultivating prayer and intercession in the local church. It's only 48 pages. It's nine principles that release the church to pray without ceasing. And you'll want to get that. And uh, I really believe uh, and it's real simple. If you're a pastor, you can get it and you can preach. It's so little. You'll preach a hundred messages on it because it'll just it'll just cause your mind to expand into all that you know. It's really really um, helpful that way. Well, can I pray for you and bless you and believe that God? If you don't have a personal prayer team, lift your hand up. Lift the, if you don't have one activated, lift your hand up. Just just do this so I can see. Uh, I believe God's going to do something amazing for those that don't have it. If you uh, are inspiring people already to, to build them, I mean, if that's your work, that's what you do, lift your hand up. I want to pray for you, and I want to bless him. Father, I thank you for each one of us here in this room. I bless them in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that prayer will go to without ceasing God. There will just be a whole movement of prayer, and I pray for each one in the room. If they don't have a team, that they'll be able to build a team. I pray for those that help others build teams, that favor and blessing will be upon them. God, to help them and grace them to do this for others. And Lord, if anyone needs help, let us all help each other. Let us strengthen each other. Let us stand together. Let us walk together. We need each other. I just bless them now in Jesus' name. Let them be family, vocation, ministry, health, and finances. Let, it, let every area in this season be fruitful and multiply and increase. Let their tent pigs be enlarged and stretched out. Father, and let the grace of your hand of protection be upon all of them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Michael, the last minute, you have one minute. And so thank you for letting me share with you all. I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Don't forget the next meeting. Okay, blessings all. Have a great day. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. you bet. Blessings. I have a quick question in the last minute. You had mentioned five areas you um, should ask for prayer for, and I got I caught a couple of them, but I'm taking notes. Can I get those one more time? Family, location, uh -huh. ministry, health, and finances. 
And you can email to Susan. If you got her email, we can stay in touch with you with Susan. Thank you. Yes, I have more questions and I did get that. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, and you can, we have a document that we can get you also that's 170 some pages. That's not a book, but we can, we can email you that as well. All kinds of things on prayer. Okay, I'll go because we were, the, this, this workshop said they had to be done. At, at 11.10, because the, the other guy only gets five minutes to get in and get started. I hate to cut you off, but blessings. Have a great day.